Welcome back to another episode of the Soul Link. I didn't even realise that these episodes were going up on my channel until now, which reminds me, Demi God, how dare you give me for even numbers? I hate even numbers. I, I didn't know that. It, well, I, I just did it because the first episode's going up on mine. That's all I did. <laughs> well, as you'd say, you learn something new every day. What you've learned today is that Ignite is much more of a fan of odd numbers than even numbers. But this one's okay because this was number four, and I like number four. It's a best even number. Ah, uh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Sure, you have an opinion on numbers as well. Like, everyone has a favorite number, so you've got to have a favorite number. Oh, what is my favorite number? There. That's the dig site that Snaggles was telling us about. I don't know, I would have to think about that. Question of the day, everyone. Whoever's behind this. My least favorite number, least favorite, my favorite number even, is seven. 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 That's why we need a scar to seven, okay? It's my favorite number. My favorite number. I've always said it as a joke, I guess. My favorite number is Pi. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I've got someone who I know whose favorite number is 235. Because if you write it in a weird way, it actually looks like a conical flask. You must find a way to stop whoever is behind this. Hold on. Yeah, you've just got to write it so that then, like, the two and the five, like, the, um... The middle sections are like right close up together. I don't know, it's with. It's just. Point is, if you're. If, if, for the way she wrote it, it looked like a conical flask, so that's why it was her favourite number. She's even more of a nerd than me, and that's really saying something. Yeah, you, you, you and me are pretty big nerds, man. Oh, I don't know, that's just how I feel about it. What's funny though is earlier I was saying about how we need a scar to seven because seven is my favourite number. We also need a Scarlet 7, because let's be honest, Imaginators wasn't the greatest conclusion to the series. You are absolutely correct. I mean, I have fun with Imaginators, but it's not like, it's, it's not a fitting conclusion. Imaginators is just my least favorite game, which really is saying something, because I do actually really like Imaginators still, it's just the weakest of this franchise, in my personal opinion, so it just shows to me how great the franchise as a whole is. You know what? I can't be asked to shit or fight you guys, so I'm not gonna fight you guys. Well, I'm on the evil eye sugar bat, man. I'm shopping over to Gorilla Driller so I can get to the evil eye sugar bat. You're gonna be like, you're gonna dread every time you have to switch to Gorilla Driller. Not in these earlier levels, I think these earlier levels I should be fine. Yeah, I think so too. Can I skip you, Willow Bark? No? Okay. I can't skip the chick of that idol, which is unfortunate. Oh no! He's been corrupted by the Crystal Asher! Get him out of his way! Okay, I think we need to be even more quiet right now so that then you can hear the glorious sounds of my foot and mashing even more. I wonder if they can hear me button mashing. You know what, my mashing is insane. You should watch me play in any of the Mario Party games that actually require you to smash buttons. I'm insanely good at those. I win those almost every time. The only person I know who can mash better than me is my sister, coincidentally enough. But the games where you have to, like, mash buttons in a certain order, I'm always better at because I can react to the buttons pretty quickly. Like, the specific ones where I can use press. And I'm better at memorizing the past as well. I have really bad reaction times. I, I wouldn't be able to pull that off. That's why I hate quick time events in video games. Oh, right. I'm fine with them. But the main reason why I have reaction times is going to say, oh, it's purely because I've been boxing for the grand majority of my life. And of course, you need really good reactions in boxing. Because here's the thing, like, my boxing skill has always been very, um, 
mix between person to person because I've had lots of people say, oh, my reactions are the best because I'm really good at, like, um, parrying and stuff like that. However, I've had a lot of people who've also said that my actual punching and kicking is the best because apparently I have some really devilish um, punches. Uh, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't know. I've never seen you, you I've never seen you box. I, I could just punch through a phone right now and then my hand would go through the cord onto the other end to get you right across the face and then you'd face the first hand. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to knock me out then. That's how phones work. Because I would get my revenge on you. Oh dear. Remember, we're soloing. That is true, yes. Portal, so where you were. One of my characters, one of yours dies. My portal is actually useless. Dude, that's unfortunate. Do you have another portal you can use? I do, I'd have to rummage through some stuff. Oh, it's working again now. It's working again, we'll leave it. When we're done with this episode, I'll swap out the portal. Alright. Yes, because I'm, I'm currently using my Trap Team 1, because for some reason Trap Team 1 work for Sword Force. Uh, the point is, I'm using my Trap Team 1 from my Day 1 PS3 version. Oh man, that is old at this point. It's not as bad as the one I have um, from a different start of Trap Team I got though, because a uh, tragic story about this one Trap Team portal, I put a chair leg through it. It was on the floor, didn't realize it, shuffled my chair back, sat down on it, I heard a cracking noise, and then I realized my chair leg went straight through the portal. Dude, I'm always worried that I'm going to break the trap tube portal. Like, it looks so nice, but it also looks so fragile. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the trap tube portal is my favorite uh, portal design, I've got to admit. That was the surprise one. I like the fact that the Supercharger's one is an engine. Another thing for oh, yeah, me to love about Superchargers and still it's... I would say Superchargers is probably in the middle for me. It's probably my third favorite game, to be honest. I would say Superchargers is my third favorite as well. Swap Force would be my favorite if it had a better Chaos Battle. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, the Trap Team Chaos Battle is probably the best boss fight of this entire franchise, let's be honest. It's also a boss Exactly, that's why I love it so much. It's like the one time where Star is ever challenging. I mean, like, I remember, there's one uh, YouTube channel that I've always really enjoyed watching. His name is Octane Blue, and he's done, like, uh, Skarna walkthroughs. Uh, he does them a lot. And when he came to the Trap Team and did Chaos on Hard Mode, I think between the two of them, they must have lost about 50 characters. That's a lot. And they said, this is the sole reason they're not doing this on Nightmare Mode. Because they did the other two games in Nightmare Mode, Swap Force and, um... Giants, but then they realized how hard the boss fight was on the uh, trap team, and it's like, no way to do this on the flight no mode. Honestly, understandable. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it on nightmare mode, except that I absolutely have to. I think when I did my let's play for the trap team, I did do that nightmare mode, and when I did the first boss fight, I think I only lost like five characters, but that was mostly because I was swapping them out. I've realized that Star Strike actually does really good against that part of Boss Fight as well. Like Star Strike is a really good choice. You think so? Yeah. Because the thing is, is that Star Strike, to play her well, she requires a lot of concentration. And because you're concentrating, it actually just makes you better at the Boss Fight as well at the same time. I mean, the Boss Fight, it's, it's more repetitive than it is difficult. Like yeah. that third stage, that third stage, you will not get a single head off on him unless he randomly does the sword move. Yeah. Like that's, that's how it was for me. That's the reason that I won the trap lock, the, the round two, was because he did that sword move like a dumbass. <sighs> Alright, I got the first hand activated on the stone monkey. I'm well behind that because of my portal glitch from earlier. I've only just like got up to the uh, 
Little Cooksy, the evil blum shake, for his dots throwing the rockets at ya. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's just take a moment. I should have tried to give you some time to catch up. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Hey, I, 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 I wanted to spend some time on the getting one of the dream monkeys or whatever they are. And then I just gave up halfway through. I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't need it. Maybe I should waste all my time doing that right now. Sounds like a plan. That uh, uh, sounds like an absolute plan. And there goes my portal again. <laughs> Okay, we're totally switching it out after after this level. Yeah, that's we're in agreement with that plan. Anyway, as we're saying, let's take a moment to just gush over the amazing animation work that they did on Evil Blue Shanks and that one cut scene. Oh, it's so animated. Rockets oh are just God, launched dude. down with such fluent armor. It's so stunning. Exactly. You gotta love the fact how I describe these animations because you know he, he moves the arms with such fluency. And then when the rockets smash down, the parts be flying up because that has physical logic to it. If you if you smash something down on the ground, it will bounce back it up. So not only does he succeed, but it also attacking. cares about meshing colors to get to look really well and fluent arm movement of all things now we're going to take a moment to talk about rattleshake's cgm and how broken this movie is oh yeah uh, my quick draw rattleshake i never actually bought an upgrade for him because i wanted to keep the quick draw rattleshake like with the very young skin i i, I, I can understand why I got my uh, quick draw rattle shake for free actually, because what wound up happening is that um, locally, at my local game, when Swap Force was out, there was this thing called the Skarner Club. So if you bought 15 characters um, registered, as a registered part of this club, then basically you got a free quick draw rattle shake. And because I bought so many Skarners, I got that free quick draw rattle shake. It also got a free um, water trap when the trap team came out as well because of that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But my favorite day one haul is actually Imaginators, purely because Imaginators, I got the Dark Strata back, then I also got Ambush, Ember, Tri-Tip, and Chaos. So that was just a really cool first uh, first day haul. Didn't mean that it's my favorite game, but still a cool haul, all the same. I think my my first day haul for Imaginaries, it was the Dark Starter Pack and Chaos. Oh, right. And you I get that as a while to get. Yeah. Cool. I waited to get all the other ones. Yeah, I chose Ambush, Tri-Tip, and Ember specifically because those were the first uh, non-star packs that they've announced. So those were the ones that I wanted to get ever since they were announced, so I was like, to get those up. But I was a bit split at the time. I don't know whether I wanted to, get, um, whether I wanted to replace Ember with Hitspool or not. I prefer Hitspool over Ember, but Hitspool was my last villain besides Green Trucker Mage purely because he's so damn expensive for whatever reason. Like, seriously, he's £20, which is above the recommended retail price. I have no idea why he used this one. That's a lot. Exactly. Uh, yeah, actually, just uh, tell me when you beat the level and then I'll we'll go into the Evil Bomb Shanks battle together. Sounds solid to me. Yeah, I don't know why. Everyone said, always says that Kutsuko is really hard to find. It was really expensive. I suppose because, like, I remember they did restocks of Wave 1 figurines a while back. But the only one that didn't restock for whatever reason was Kutsuko, so... You just got rare and rare ever since day one. Wow. I think what Activision should have done is they should have conducted, like, pre-launch surveys. So then they could have known what Skarners were going to be in demand the most, so that then they could have made more or less of the Skarners respectively. Mm. Like, let's see. Let's just out of characters that, like, people talk about, I don't hear anyone talking about Tri-Tip. Oh, Tri-Tip is so much fun. I mean, he's, he's, he's fine. Like, I, I don't 
know my, my tier list by heart, but he's like, I think he's like bottom B tier. Maybe mid B tier. Okay, we're in boss fight now. Alright. I'm going into the boss cutscene then. Cool. Well, I've already beat the boss cutscene, I'm actually in the actual boss, because that's where I thought you were. Oh no, I was, I was, I was just waiting at the, like, right before the cutscene. I see, I see. I just realized I'm slowing down boom shanks for my teleport ability. That is useful. Oh, yeah, that's actually. That could actually be really good. That shift is just really good in this boss fight period. Nightshift might struggle against Mesmeralda, though. You'd be surprised, Mesmeralda I actually have the most practice with because, uh, of course, the freestyle objectives for this game, for the boss fights, are to do them without taking a single hit. So because of that, I've practiced Mesmeralda so much because that's the hardest one to do without getting hit, in my personal opinion. So it just makes it pattern so well, and I'm so good at dodging them that I'm sure I shall be fine. Like I say, what I'm truly not looking forward to is Evil Whiskers with Grosjean. That's the only one I'm dreading. Yeah. I mean, I can see why. It's a very unspawned boss battle. Ugh. Oh, actually, you know, I was talking about with the survey before. Because that just reminded yeah. me of Giants. Because when Giants came out, I remember after Christmas, um, the only characters I could find was Series 2 Bash and uh, Lightcore Jetpack. So I find that so ironic that the Lightcore Jetpack was everywhere, despite the fact that even back at Giants, not many people liked Jetpack. And I find it so ironic that I could find Series 2 Bash everywhere, because I knew for a fact that in America, he was near impossible to find, and then in Europe, he was everywhere. For some reason, a lot of people have trouble finding a series two robot. In Europe, yeah. The um, thing with series two robot is that in Europe, he was never even released. Really? Yeah, he never got released in Europe. Um, I got my series two robot imported. That's how I got him. Yeah, I had him imported from America. I paid ten pounds for him. Um, and then I pay ten pounds for shipping, so I pay twenty pounds for the But for a series two robot for a European, it was so good because the only other option was one that was thirty five pounds, and so it's just like you know I'm just gonna get the for twenty pound one. And the thirty five pound one wasn't even like new or anything. The, the twenty pound one was brand new in box and everything. In fact, I still have the the box for series two robot. I I did in box figure. The, the box was like in such good condition that I simply just glued it together and it still looks pretty damn good. Well, that's good, man. Like, let's see, what, what, what I, I think I still have all my packages for Imaginators. Yeah, that's the thing, I love the design for the Imaginators packaging because they designed it in a way that you could unbox the starters and still keep the packaging in really good condition. Oh, they look so high quality, man. But the Eons Elite boxes are by far my favorite ones. They look so cool. I don't have any Eons Elite boxes. Uh, the boxes, they have... actually, um, they shine. So if you reflect the light of them, they actually have a really nice shine. And they have the artwork of the Skarner at hand, like, on the top. So the contrasting colors between the artwork and the shine of the box, it just looks so cool. I just realized that I accidentally got three stars in this level because I actually took no damage the whole time without noticing. Dude, this is the first level you finished out of me. Oh, yay. <laughs> Did that by total accident. Hey, I got him. Nice. But I got three stars too, man. Glad to see you back here in Vesaro, <laughs> just so good at this game, we must be. Oh, I'm bringing out the Yoda talk now. You know, it's a special episode when I bring out the Yoda. Self-proclaimed best Skylanders player. In fact, on YouTube has come here. Self-proclaimed best Yoda voice of the SkyTubers because I definitely don't have the best Yoda voice period. But I haven't heard many of the SkyTubers do a Yoda voice, so I'm just gonna say mine is the best for now, at least. I don't think I can do a good Yoda voice. <laughs> I 
I can do a good Chewbacca. All you gotta do for Chewbacca is yawn. Think about this, okay? If you're Vin Diesel, you get paid millions for saying, I am Groot, down a mic. I am Groot. Exactly. Or, if you're the voice actor for Chewbacca, I have no idea who it is, but the point is, they get paid millions for yawning down a mic. Okay, yeah. That's, honestly, that's like the best job ever. Yeah, that would be so good. You could show up to work tired, and you would be praised for it. You'd be like, you showed up to work, but you're, uh, you showed up to work tired even, but you're yawning. Or some yeah. more better than usual. Here's a bonus. <laughs> oh, oh I, I so wish I could have that job. Actually, that does remind me of the um, trending video, trended a few years back, of a woman with a Chewbacca toy, you know, the mask that when you open your mouth it did the yawning. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a mother who bought their child this Chewbacca toy, which, like I said before, it was a mask which yawn whenever you open your mouth. But she opened it before giving it to her child and started playing around with it. <laughs> and she loved it so much that she didn't, uh, I'm going to assume she didn't even mind giving it to the child. But still, it started trending everywhere. Everyone was watching this, this video of just this mother messing around with this Chewbacca mask. It was hilarious, that's why. I mean, it sounds like it. Well, anyways, I'm ready to end off this episode whenever you are. I'm just waiting for Snagglescale to shut up. Well, he is notorious in this game for speaking. I can relate to Snagglescale so much in the fact that I don't stop talking. Well, Alright, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. Cool. So I want to thank every last one of you for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next one, which is going to be episode 5, so you want to go and check out Demigod's channel for that. But regardless, until the said moment arises, peace.